Good day, everyone. Today, I would like to present the abstract on the topic of will the beta A9 muscle avulsion affect pelvic floor training in women with urinary incontinence. And this abstract was prepared by a team from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. We have no disclosure. The aim of this study is to assess whether the presence of levita A9 muscle avulsion would affect the outcome of pelvic floor training in women with urinary incontinence. We have conducted a prospective study in our Treasury Eurogyne Center. We included all women who presented with urinary incontinence and they were referred for a pelvic floor muscle training program. This program was led by our specialized continent advisors and it will begin with one session on teaching about lifestyle, drinking and voiding habit and pelvic floor exercise and also bladder retraining. And then it will be followed by two to three sessions of the individual's tutorial. During the first consultation, the gynecologist will follow a standard consultation forms to inquire about their symptoms. And then a transperineal ultrasound scan will be performed to assess the levita A9 muscle. Patients will also be invited to fill in a validated questionnaires on their quality of life. And we used UDI-6, the Urinary Distress Infantry Structure Form, and also IIQ-7, which is the Incontinence Impact Questionnaires in Chinese. And after the first consultation, at the end of the final session in the pelvic floor muscle training, they will repeat these two questionnaires. A Eurodynamic study will be arranged and it will be performed under a standard protocol. The treatment outcome was assessed by the UDI-6 and IRQ scoring before and after the pelvic floor muscle training program in women with or without the levator in a muscle avulsion. And we performed the student t-test and chi-square test using the SPSS software. And this study was approved by our local institutes for the ethics committee. So here comes the result. A total of 100 women were recruited for our study. The mean age is about 62 years old with a median parity of 2 and also the BMI was 25 kg per meter square. The mean follow-up time of this group of patients is about 9 months and we can identify about 44% of them have either unilateral or bilateral levator A9 muscle avulsion. So from this table, we can see for the demographic in women with or without levator A9 muscle injury, they were similar without significant difference in terms of their age, the vaginal parity, their BMI, their smoking habit, whether they are having diabetic mellitus or their menopausal status, sexual status, and also whether they are having any coexisting pelvic organ prolapse. In the Eurodynamic sessions, also we can identify the similar numbers of women who are having the diagnosis of Eurodynamic stress incontinence or detrusor overactivity. And the follow-up duration in both groups of women were also similar. For the pelvic floor exercise, their compliance in both groups of women were also similar. And we have compared the pre and post treatment UDI, score, uh, UDI scoring and also IIQ scoring. The mean difference in both questionnaires scoring did not reach any statistical significance, although they showed improvement in their symptoms after the both program. So in conclusion, Perfect floor muscle training is effective to improve the symptoms of incontinence in women. And women who sustain from a levator anal muscle injury during their previous delivery show similar improvement in their quality of life in this cohort study. And further study with a larger sample size is required to evaluate this association. Thank you.